Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Please don't mind my voice. I'm very sick. I'm getting better, actually. It sounds worse than it actually is. <laughs> All right, today we're going to be talking about the recent allegations against Trisha Paytas' fiance, Moses, as well as reading and dissecting his tweets addressing the allegations. But before we get started, go ahead and give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to this channel, or else, like, for real, give it a thumbs up, or else you'll have bad luck for 10 years. Sorry, I don't make the rules. <laughs> I'm trying to help you. It's for your own good, so just do it. Also, follow us on Twitter, the place where we talk about internet things, and you can DM us with any tea that you want us to cover in the future. With all that being said, let's get into this mess. <coughs> So to start off, we have to go back to February of 2020, Valentine's Day to be exact. Moses spent his evening with a girl named Daphne. Moses claims this was the only time he and Daphne ever met in person. Daphne has not publicly stated if that's true or not, so all we have is Moses' word on that right now. Many have said that he cheated on Trisha Paytas when this information came out, but since we only speak facts, facts and, and logic. logic on this channel, I'm here to tell you that technically Moses didn't cheat on on Trisha in February of 2020 because he and Trisha had not gone together yet. Trisha and Moses began dating sometime during the filming of the H3 Bachelorette series, which first aired in March of 2020. While the timeline of Moses and Daphne and Moses and Trisha falls very close, from my understanding, the two relationships never overlapped. Recently, Daphne has come forward on her Instagram answering questions about Moses. I've already touched on this Q&A in a recent video, so I'll link that somewhere on the screen if you want to hear more about what she said but she also posted a few more statements i wanted to read before we get into it i would like to give a disclaimer that i will be talking about a form of sa during the majority of this video and if this could trigger you in any way please go ahead and click off right now in her instagram story posts daphne said when we had X, he stealthed me. It was agreed that we would use protection and midway he removed it. I was ashamed and still loved him and didn't want to admit to myself that it was wrong, but it is. I was disgusted with myself and felt worthless. He knows I've been abused in the past, which led to my diagnosed anxiety slash panic disorder. I'm all about sex positivity, but that's not what this is. He is dangerous. I didn't see it back then because I was clouded by how I felt about him and tried to justify everything. To other victims i did not know about you and i'm so sorry you're going through this he lied to multiple people about his sexual history and put us young women at risk before i say anything about this i first want to give you the textbook definition of stealthing stealthing is the act of removing a condom during sex without the consent of the partner it's illegal in many countries and is a form of sexual assault this is a non-consensual sexual act therefore stealthing is a form of sa Unfortunately, it is not technically illegal, so there are no repercussions towards anyone who does this. However, Assembly Member Christina Garcia actually recently introduced a bill to the governor of California. If he signs off on this bill, it will make stealthing considered a form of sexual battery in the state of California, therefore punishable by law. Garcia claims that this law could help validate survivors of stealthing by their assault or being punished legally. If this bill goes into effect, California will be the first state to successfully pass a legislation in regards to stealthing. Countries such as New Zealand, Switzerland, and Canada do already have their own active laws against stealthing, but as usual, America is corrupt and behind. A New Zealand man was actually sentenced to three years and nine months in prison for stealthing. With the facts presented and the obvious immoral act of stealthing, hopefully you have a better understanding now of how serious this is and Moses has been accused by Daphne of stealthing. It's unclear if this was a repeated act or if it only happened once, but regardless, it's still a very serious allegation. Moses took to Twitter to address the recent allegations against him, assuming he's talking about being accused of stealthing right wrong moses shares screenshots between him and daphne and in these texts all it proves is that she and moses did in fact spend valentine's day together that daphne had or has feelings for moses and that moses did not want to be in a relationship with her moses does not share anything to deny the allegations of his accused acts of stealthing which is the most serious allegation currently out there about him before i read the text that moses shared i want to mention that it's pretty obvious moses only 
only shared select pieces of conversations, so there very well could be a lot of missing context. It seems like Moses only chose the text that made him out to be kind of like innocent of ever being in a relationship or wanting a relationship with Daphne. I guess in his mind, he is debunking the rumors of him cheating on Trisha. I'm not going to read all the texts that he shared, but I will tell you when to pause to read the ones that I'm not going to be reading. Moses starts off by tweeting, Recently there has been a serious allegation made against me that is not true. I have chosen to not give attention to it out of respect for this person's well-being, but now the lies have gone too far. I met this person only once in real life on February 14th of 2020. She is not my ex, she was never my girlfriend. I am showing these texts to show the timelines of what actually happened. I made it clear I didn't want to lead her on and that is nobody's fault. She continued to ask me to meet up with her and have a relationship with her after I made it clear I didn't feel we were a match. She got upset when me and Trisha started dating well after we stopped talking and continued to plead with me to date her and not Trisha. It's been a year and a half of this person spreading lies but now this false accusations cannot be ignored please read this thread for the text messages when we were communicating then he tweets a series of screenshots of texts between him and daphne the first conversation shared is basically daphne saying that she cares about moses and she asks him to follow her back on instagram you can pause to read the text now the next screenshot starts with a cutoff text from Daphne. The end of it reads, If you find someone, I want you to be happy. I want us to remain friends more than anything. Moses responds by saying, I don't want to lead you on. I don't want to give you false hope. You know me, I live a lonely life and teach people from afar. I can't do my work when things like this happen. I'm not a normal person or friend and you will be disappointed with me again. In these texts, Daphne expresses how much she cares about Moses and Moses makes it clear that he does not want to move forward in a relationship with Daphne and that he did not feel the same way about her. The next screenshot Moses shares proves the same thing. He did not want to be with Daphne and Daphne was very much into him for some odd reason. <laughs> like, I don't get it. The next thread of text starts by Daphne saying, same, maybe that wasn't good. He goes, I'm sorry I hurt your feelings, not my intention ever. She says, I'm sorry I hurt yours as well. It was never my intention. I care about you a lot, even now. And then he goes, too much. She goes, that's why I worry and can't help it yeah i can't control that he goes i know you can't control yourself she says it's not a choice he responds that is why i can't trust you <laughs> Like I said earlier, the texts that Moses shared are missing a lot of context and seem to be from literally in the middle of a conversation. It's not really clear what either of them are apologizing for here. We don't know when this conversation took place and we don't know what they did to hurt each other's feelings. All we can really take from this is that Daphne says she cares about Moses and Moses claims that she cares too much. The next string of text starts with Daphne questioning what she did wrong. Moses responds by saying, You did nothing wrong. Not everyone are a match. I never said that you did something wrong when we met. Dating is about finding your match, not forcing it. It takes two, not one. You did nothing wrong. You couldn't change the outcome. Personally, this to me looks like one of two scenarios. Either Moses took advantage of a girl by talking with her and making her believe that he was into her just to have a one night stand and leave her. Moses thinks he can write this off as them not being a match, but you also have to consider this. Daphne was 22 years old at the time and Moses was in his 40s. He could have very well manipulated her into thinking that he wanted something more just to persuade her to sleep with him. It's much easier for someone to manipulate a person who is literally like half their age. This, of course, is all just speculation. The other possible scenario is that Moses could have, from the beginning, made it very clear to Daphne that he did not have any intention of being with her long term. Daphne could have ignored this and got attached to Moses, or she could be spinning a narrative against Moses just to gain attention. Let me make it clear, I'm not saying I believe this is the case, I'm just bringing up a theory. I personally don't think this is the case at all. I definitely believe Moses could have led Daphne on just to sleep with her once and then leave her high and dry. That's just my opinion, though I'm only speculating here. And neither of those theories are proven or factual at this time. Like I said earlier, though, Moses shared very select text messages between him and Daphne and a lot of context is missing. On April 2nd, about two weeks after Daphne and Moses hooked up, Daphne sent Moses a long text expressing her feelings towards him and how much she'd enjoy spending Valentine's Day with him. She apologizes for any drama that she caused, I'm assuming between him and Trisha since they were dating at this time. Go ahead and pause if you want to read exactly what Daphne said in this text.
The next set of screenshots is Daphne showing concern for Moses and expressing how him dating Trisha made her feel. She says, I wrote you a card and talked about wanting to see you again. Meanwhile, you chose someone over me who wants to destroy every relationship you have and has a history of abuse. He says, don't mix the two. That is just twisted. She says, wow, that's literally what it is. I don't know why you're not seeing it. You're better than this. Before she came forward with the stealthing allegations, many thought that Daphne was just a clout chaser and was only out to hurt Moses and create drama between him and Trisha. But once the SA allegations came forward, this has went from petty relationship drama to a grown man taking advantage of a younger woman midway through intercourse. This changes everything and resulted in putting her at risk of pregnancy, contracting sexually transmitted diseases, and also having unprotected sex with her without her consent. I cannot imagine the emotional damage that has been done to Daphne and I really hope that she can find a way to cope and deal with what's happened to her. I really don't know what exactly Moses thought he was doing by releasing these screenshots and his statement on Twitter, he really didn't address or debunk any allegations against him. Sure, he might have proven that he did not want a relationship with Daphne, but he did nothing to prove that he did not have non-consensual unprotected sex with her. Trisha Paytas is a self-proclaimed advocate for SA victims, but was this all just for her media attention and to only benefit her? How can she stand with victims when her own fiance has been accused of SAing a woman just last year? It's very hypocritical. It seems like Trisha only wanted to show support for victims when it benefited her. But when the assaulter is her fiance, it's passed off as disturbed. This is actually what she refers to Daphne as in a video that she recently uploaded to her members only YouTube future. I won't be posting any clips of the video here because homegirl loves to copyright strike me, but you can easily look up the clips yourself as people have uploaded them on the internet. Just look for the video of Trisha with big bird looking hair. In this video, she really paints the picture of Daphne being an obsessed ex who just wanted Moses to be with her, and then tries to, I guess, sympathize with her by saying she's been there. Trisha completely disregards all accusations of stealthing and just tries to make it look like Daphne was just a one-night stand that didn't work out. Trisha is only an advocate for SA victims when it benefits her or she has her own personal vendetta against the assaulter, such as when she spoke out against Jason Nash for SAing Seth and David vlogs. Remember how hard she went for Jason? And like rightfully so, I'm not saying Trisha shouldn't have went out for Jason. What I'm trying to prove here is that Trisha seems to pick and choose who she wants to go after when it comes to these things. There's no shortage of Trisha speaking out against Jason Nash and his essay allegations. But when allegations come out against her fiance who she is about to marry, she acts like they don't exist. She passes the allegations off as completely untrue and says Moses even has to text messages to prove this. I'm assuming she's talking about the text that Moses already shared on Twitter and baby, none of those prove that he didn't stealth Daphne. Like, mm, I don't know if we were looking at the same messages, but like what? Yeah, I don't know, man. I really want to know what your opinions are in the comments down below. So make sure to write them down there. Also make sure to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe. We post new videos every single day. All right, bye-bye.